There was a big vulnerability on Mozilla, Mozilla VPN to be exact. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how this all worked. Again, we're not actually going to be talking about the exploit itself because from looking at the re official report, we don't have enough evidence to conclude something which has happened for real. But we can talk about something else which might actually explain a little bit of how this all functioned. But again, we can't 100% know for sure how this actually worked. The vulnerability was elevation of privilege, aka privilege escalation via a logic vulnerability. So sit tight, relax, and let's get started with this video. Oh, and if you want to learn hacking, then check out my Bug Bounty Academy, which is down in the description box below to learn hacking and everything in general. So the description of this vulnerability goes like this. This vulnerability is a bypass for a previously fixed issue. This exploit uses symbolic links during the installation process on Mac OS platforms that allows an unprivileged user to gain root privileges. So this basically was found on the Mozilla VPN and the first version that was patched was 2.24. Okay. So this is basically a root privilege escalation where a regular user can get to root privileges on a Mac OS. However, I'll be explaining this exploit-ish on Windows because again, Mac OS and Windows are very different. Mac OS is Unix based, but for you to kind of sparkle your thoughts a little bit, we're going to be talking about Windows only because this can be applied to Windows as well, even though there are two different platforms. So let's get started. Again, I'm not going to be actually talking about the installation process thing here. I'm just going to talk about after the program was installed, how this can look like in the wild. And I found issues like this before. So it's going to be a nice little educative lesson for you. So to get started, we're going to be actually using something from the previous video, which is the calculator.exe and math.dll. So just so you know, these two programs are going to be our kind of proof of concept and going to be our reference when explaining this vulnerability. Before we even get started with the explanation of this vulnerability, we need to make two reference points in this video. There are two different programs on Windows, as well as most platforms, but on Windows, it's very easy to understand and differentiate two different programs that can be run. We have a license program and we have a regular EXE with nothing special. The difference between these two is very obvious. One is signed with a trusted certificate that is trusted by the operating system to do, for example, anything. But there is a twist to that as well. Another one is a regular, <laughs> there's an R missing there, sorry, regular EXE, nothing special. I know it's just so funny, I'm sorry. So regular EXE with nothing special is not signed with a trusted certificate. And in this case, let me show you how it looks like. So when you want to perform something which requires administrative privileges on Windows when running an unsigned program, uh, I don't know if you can actually see this though. Oh, my bad. I think OBS. So when you want to run something, basically, I can't show you because OBS, OBS won't record that part, but it will show you like a pop up. You can probably see it on the screen right now at the moment. And how it looks like is there's a yellow thing here. And it also tells you that this you're trying to run a program which is not trusted by the operating system as an administrator and tells you, hey, th this could be a problem. However, when you're trying to run a license program, the pop-up looks a bit different. There's a blue overlay at the top, and it also tells you that this is a trusted publisher. And for example, in my case, it tells me that this is Brave. Okay, so now that we understand two differences, which one of these programs will be tr most likely to be trusted by the user? For example, imagine if you run this program and regular program you just downloaded from the internet and it asks you for administ administrative priv privileges. For example, showed you the pop-up. You probably would click no because that's shady, right? However, if a license program or something that you trust, like Brave in this example, or anything else that's trusted by the operating system asks you, hey, can I run as root? You'll absolutely give it yes, because why wouldn't you? It's the trusted program. Well, here is where the vulnerability kind of arises and lays down, because that's the, ex that's the exact behavior we want from these programs. But we'll get into that. So our target program is going to be calculator. And I just want you to imagine that this calculator is actually signed by a trusted certificate and the operating system trusts it. So aka okay, when you run it, it will show you, hey, this is a trusted program by this publisher, blah, blah, blah. So just so you know that, okay? This is a DLL, which is gets, gets loaded by this calculator. So when you run it and when you, for example, run it as administrator or whatever, it gets loaded pretty damn good. Okay, cool. And imagine this scenario, this program calculator.exe is installed over here, for example, in the most generic path on Windows ever, because accessing this doesn't require administrative privileges too. So if you want to put a file here, you're like, for example, copy and paste the math DLL, it will obviously work. 
However, if you go to program files and for example, into Brave software and put paste, ah, there we go, access is denied. So this is a very, very, very crucial thing to understand here because imagine a program you just downloaded and ran an installer and it installs it on your computer. Imagine that the program actually maybe creates a folder on the desktop itself. Imagine just that. Imagine that there is a folder on the desktop, which for example, looks like this, and there is a DLL file, which gets loaded by the calculator, which is a trusted program. Now writing or reading from this directory right here doesn't require administrative privileges. So we can basically as an attacker create a malware, which will replace the DLL file here with no administrative privileges required. Because when you run this program, it can basically replace this without asking, hey, admin privileges, blah, blah, blah. And the DLL that we replace, for example, the math.dll, we will replace it with something that will basically, once you run the calculator, it will load this math DLL. Actually, you know what, let me just try to write this a little bit better. So you, so you understand, imagine that this actually right here is no longer an exe. This is just a DLL or math.dll. And once this gets tampered with another one, which basically allows an attacker to do, it will look something like this. So license program gets executed no admin privileges or anything. And it loads a DLL here. And this DLL basically has, for example, math functions or whatever. So just in this example, it works pretty much good. However, once this gets tampered with another DLL file, which the attacker has written in the license program, basically now expects this to be loaded. So it loads it. And what happens is, for example, an attacker creates a pop up saying, basically, once you load the DLL saying, hey, you need to update the li this license program click OK to continue and you basically click OK. And then it shows you the administrative privilege administrative pop up saying, Hey, we need privileges. But since the license program itself is making the request on behalf of this DLL, which is now the evil DLL, I'll just write a little like devilish ears, it will basically show yes or no. But here it will tell you that this is a trusted program, aka, for example, brave or calculator in our example. And you wouldn't have a reason to click no, you, you basically click yes, you want to update it and boom, you just gave this evil DLL administrative privileges, even though when you install the malware on the computer, it didn't require any admin privileges to basically tamper the file because it was in a path or a location on Windows, which doesn't require you at root privileges to replace or read files or write them. So that's kind of how it goes. And I found these vulnerability on in the wild a while actually. So it's very easy to mess these th mess these things up. And I reckon that's something kind of what happened here. There was a file which was replaced for by the attacker that was executed as root when you were doing the installation process on the Mac OS platforms that that allowed an attacker to gain admin privileges on the platform. So yeah, hopefully you learned something today in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.